uh, I must tell you that uh, in the first lecture, whatever I wanted to talk about, uh, I very fast uh, I could complete it. But kind of question put by uh, coordinator, uh, they were really good questions, and I am happy that uh, uh, that kind of question were asked, genuine question were asked. I hope keeping in that view uh, today also you will ask right type of questions. Uh, let me first make my things uh, proper, then let me go. I select it. Yeah. So uh, today I will talk about uh, finite difference solution of one and two dimensional heat conduction equation. And these heat conduction equations are, as you understand, a parabolic equation, and they are very important uh, occurring in many uh, real life applications. Uh, so, what I'm given is that uh, I am given du by dt equal to alpha du by dx2, where my uh, x is lying between some interval a to b with uh, ux0 equal to fx and boundary conditions uat equal to some g1t and uh, ubt equal to uh, g2t. Uh, first, uh, uh, it is a heat condensation in in a rod uh, or one dimension. As you understand, uh, there is a first derivative of t. So uh, you need a, an initial condition. So this is my initial condition. This is my initial condition at t equal to 0. And then my x is a double derivative, or d2 by dx2 is there. So I need two condition on boundary. And my, uh, I am considering here diddly boundary condition. Nevertheless, if you want, you can have Nyman boundary condition with a little change, and you may lose some accuracy at the boundary if your conditions are Nyman. So uh, I have UAT equal to G1T at the first boundary, and UBT equal to uh, G2T in the second boundary. Now, before I uh, uh, go for the formal lecture, let me tell you what I will cover. So I will cover here uh, what you call uh, finite difference for one dimension. Then I will tell you what is an explicit and implicit scheme. Scheme. Then I will tell you voltage convergence, stability, and consistency. Then I will come to uh, what you call some difference scheme and uh, about them. Then I will take two dimensional problem two-dimensional problem. That is my agenda of today. Let's see what I can do. So you uh, have a second, uh, you have first one-dimensional problem. Before I go to actual thing, uh, historically, in 1911, uh, Richardson derived first time a finite difference scheme for this equation, and unluckily, I say again, unluckily, he derived a scheme thinking it will give much better solution, but it was not useful. So many books doesn't mention it, but he was first person who derived a scheme. And what he did, actually, let me tell you. Uh, my notation will be uh, UIN means UXI. Or Tn, where I have uh, k step size or step length along time 
and uh, edge step size uh, along space or x. So you have a problem at t equal to zero, and then I have this. This is my t direction, and this is my x direction. I divide into number of uh, equal parts here. So this is my delta t or k, and this is my 2k, and so on. So we will go march ahead in this way. So the, this is x. So what you have is that what he did, you know, thinking that it will give accurate results, uh, he write the scheme h i n plus 1 minus u i n minus 1 upon 2k equal to alpha time u i plus 1 n minus 2 i n plus i i minus 1 upon n. I hope for, uh, I have taken already uh, last time finite difference h. This is certain difference uh, operator in time. And this is also center difference operator uh, in space. This is a 2D, so uh, sorry, the second derivative. So I have ui plus 1n minus 2in plus ui minus 1n upon h square. And ui n plus 1 minus ui n minus 1. He took this approximation ui n plus 1 minus 2 uh, minus ui n minus 1 upon 2k. Uh, he took this approximation thinking it will give better accuracy in time. So he thought, and indeed it is, that it is of order k square plus h square. But what happened is that uh, when he applied the method, then uh, found that it is not converging. Found it is not converging. It is not converging. And in, it is not converging because it is always unstable. Always unstable scheme. Now, if you see, uh, if I write this scheme properly, then I will be, uh, as I have written already here, but you will see that this scheme is ui n plus 1 is equal to lambda u i plus 1 n minus 2 u i n plus u i n minus 1 and I have taken everything this side so this become plus u i n minus 1. Uh, now you can understand this is an explicit scheme. Explicit scheme. What I say, this is an explicit scheme, uh, meaning is that uh, when I take this scheme, then uh, I, the solution at the advanced level, level, I can find I'm changing the color, please let me. Yeah, so uh, this is an explicit scheme because solution at the advanced level, uh, n plus one can be found directly uh, from the uh, right hand side, which is a known level, n and n minus one, both are level. So this is an explicit scheme. At the same time, it is three-level scheme. It is three-level scheme. What I mean to say is that there are three time level involved. n plus 1, n, and n minus 1. So uh, uh, explicit scheme is something like y equal to fx. I give the value of x, and then I can find what the value of uh, my y h. However, if you have a question of the type, fx y equal to zero, then y cannot be find uh, x uh, 
uh, ex uh, explicitly because you have to solve some equation. For example, if I have x squared minus x y plus y squared equal to zero, then uh, given x y cannot be obtained directly, but you need to solve something. And same way, an scheme is called uh, a scheme is called a scheme is called an implicit scheme. scheme if it is of the form a u n plus 1 i is equal to a b u i n or other level are involved. My point is that in the right left side you have a matrix A that is you don't have only age, not identity matrix or age, not uh, you have a scheme where some factor is involved in the left side and you have the terms of the ui plus 1 n plus 1, ui n plus 1 and ui minus 1 n plus 1 in the left side. And so ui n plus 1 cannot be found exclusively. You have need to solve a system of equation which could be linear or non-linear depending on whether your uh, system, whether your equation is given to you is linear or not. So uh, that is about what is an implicit scheme, what is an explicit scheme. I have also told you that what is the level. Level means uh, how many time level is involved. Uh, I will discuss about uh, this point also later on, but let me come to my a uh, simple equation uh, day u by day t equal to alpha time uh, day t u by day x2 and uh, uh, this is my uh, a this is my b and then I take my h and then this is my time level going here this is my x is equal to a boundary and this is my x is equal to b boundary and this is my h, this is my k, this is my 2k and so on. Now if I write simple scheme, two level, then my scheme will be ui n plus 1 minus ui n upon k equal to alpha time, you have ui plus 1 n minus 2 ui n plus ui minus 1 n upon h square. So this is the approximation for the du by dt and right side is the approximation for the what do you call your uh, uh, delta x2. So I take this approximation, the moment I have taken the approximation, then my equation become ui n plus 1 minus ui n equal to lambda time u i plus 1 n minus 2 u i n plus u i minus 1 n where by lambda h k by h square which is called mass ratio this is called mass ratio All right or i can write this h u i n plus 1 is equal to lambda times u i plus 1 n plus u i minus 1 n then I have 1 minus 2 lambda u i n so this u i n I take something which is known to me in the right side then I can write my scheme in this form so this is my simple uh, two level uh, uh, explicit is scheme. Now, the, uh, before I go to uh, discussing its stability and other property, then uh, there are the two, three things which are uh, associated with uh, every finite difference scheme. And uh, I request my friends to listen to me now patiently because it is these are the concepts one has to know. So there is uh, something called truncation error. There is something called round off errors.
in a scheme first these scheme are uh, approximate scheme designed for to use on a computer and that's why they have error they are not exact solution so i we know there is error but what kind of error we have we have two kind of error one is truncation error and other is the round of error so i just write re now to any numerical method truncation error is coming from the method you are using i i desire to use a uh, newton epson method so i know uh, my accuracy will be of second order or convergence will be of the second order so the truncation error is something coming from the method so once you have chosen your method uh, you know what is the truncation error i have, i will be having now round of error is something which is coming from the machine which you are going to use machine due to machine because machine is there and some machine are having more accuracy some machine are having less accuracy as a, as you might have seen you are doing some computation in the single precision uh, you get very high error but the moment you go to double precision your uh, uh, error become less because of the accuracy and because of the round of errors so friends uh, you have two kind of uh, error the truncation error is because of the method which you have selected and round of error is because of the machine or the calculator which you are going to use but as a uh, numerical analysis or as a mathematician we have to bother bo of both before i use the method i must know what is the error i am going to uh, uh, have and i must also know whether my method will be stable or not it will work or not on computer well as i said to you richardson de uh, derived a very nice scheme thinking it will be give me accurate results however when he solved the problem he found that the problem is not giving you desired result it is a uh, uh, for a smaller value of k even it is not giving good solution so uh, one has to look into what are the problems so before you go to this one has to know whether your method is convergent or not second thing is that whether your method is uh, stable or not they are two different things stability is not convergence and convergence is not stability but they are connected and there is something called a consistency and what is consistency i come to one by one so i just define what we saw say convergent or convergence of a scheme a scheme is called i say finite decision scheme is called convergent if its truncation error error h h tends to 0 k tends to 0 goes to 0 so as you take a small step length h and k the truncation error should be zero indeed if you see uh, this scheme uh, uh, designed the way richardson designed nothing wrong in it it uh, is it may be convergent i say but uh, uh, there is another point which we call stability uh, let me tell my young friends that stability is a concept which comes into being when your problem is uh, generally time dependent because uh, otherwise convergence and stability they are uh, having same kind of thing and uh, if somebody is discussing stability uh, which is in the sense that uh, which we do here also in the sense that if i give a small perturbation in the system how system will behave due to that perturbation and that chaos problem is Uh, one of the problem of this kind of stuff 
uh, small perturbation which causes a lot of difference, causes a lot of difference. So stability is a concept which is associated with the round of errors or associated with the machine. What it says is that as my time, as our time, t goes to infinity because my problem is time dependent problem my t become very large then the error in the solution error in the solution should remain bounded and should not go and should not go i write end and should not go uncontrolled they remain under control i mean to say somehow we have to check whether by round of errors because at each time we step you are committing round of errors you understand that and this round of rub, they gets add up, add up, add up. One has to check that your round of errors do not go and, uh, in a, such a way that they get magnified and your solution become no solution. So basically, stability is a problem where round of errors, errors remain under control. under control that is what my uh, 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 stability is then there is a third concept uh, which is also very important and i tell you that why it's important you will understand uh, which is theoretical questions too that uh, is that this question people ask how are you, are you making sure that your differential equation is given to you? I want the solution of differential equation, but you got some finite difference scheme, then how will you make sure that this finite difference scheme is giving the solution of the differential equation which you have selected, or it may give some solution, fine, but how should I believe that this is the solution of the given differential equation? So I say, I scheme it, it called consistent if it does produce does produce solution of of the given differential equation equation for which it is designed for which it is developed it is developed and not of other other differential equation so these are three concept the one concept h convergence we want a convergent method, but at the same time, we want a method which should be stable too. And nobody wants the solution of a differential equation which is not he has to solve. So these three con concepts uh, are there. And uh, uh, I just tell you for the consistency, uh, those of you who know the, have studied uh, uh, your uh, this kind of thing you are taught or you are teaching, uh, there is something called Dufort, Dufort Frankel scheme. Dufort Frankel scheme. Now, this is uh, derived from the Richardson scheme. Dufort Frankel scheme is, is uh, developed from here. What he did was that there were two, they, what they did was that 
they replace minus two i u i n by uh, u i n plus one plus u i n minus one for Dupont Franken. For Dupont Dupont Franken. And uh, if you desire, then I will show you. And then let me see how, how much time I have. But what I mean to say is this is scheme, which is three level, three level explicit scheme, explicit scheme, but consistent only under condition that h by k tends to 0 also h h tends to 0 k tends to 0 i saw you just now that also so you have uh, that uh, it's not necessary that when h tends to 0 or k tends to 0 um, uh, you may get uh, convergent Sometimes you get this kind of factor in the uh, truncation error, and so you desire that your solution should be of the differential equation which, for which you are designing or you are developing the uh, differential scheme. It should not be going to some other differential equation. If you are interested in that differential equation, then fine, but you are not interested. You are interested, you are developing for some, something else, and see that. I again say now, please understand my point. Uh, an explicit scheme cannot be unconditionally stable in any circumstances. If it is unconditionally stable, there will be some condition from the consistency. So, explicit scheme, they are in general, uh, they have problem of the stability or consistency. On the other hand, Implicit schemes are good from the stability as well as from the what you call your um, consistency point of view. So this is my general statement which you may keep in the mind when you design your scheme. And I say that do Ford Frankel scheme, it is unconditionally stable, but it is not consistent unless this condition is satisfied. And this condition set said to you. Uh, I'm sorry, please. This is k k by h. I'm sorry, please. This is k by h tends to zero. So uh, uh, this uh, tells you that k tends to zero faster than h. Then only uh, the, the scheme will be uh, consistent. Otherwise, it will not be. Uh, to give my point, because it's not taking much time, I just tell you what I mean to say. My Dupont Frankel scheme h u i n minus one upon 2k is equal to uh, ui plus 1 uh, and minus ui plus 1 uh, i n plus ui n minus 1 plus ui minus 1 n. This is n plus 1, please. This is n plus 1. So you have this scheme, uh, Dupont Frankel scheme. Now, when I want to uh, drive its uh, truncation error, then please understand that ui n plus 1 minus ui n minus 1. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, there is, uh, I take one by one so that you, so you have this as ui n plus k times day u by day t at i n plus k square upon factorial 2 day to u by day 2 i n plus n so on. And similarly, ui n minus 1 is equal to u i n minus k du by d t at i n plus k square upon factorial to uh, i n and so on. So 
my u i n plus one minus u i n minus one become two u i n k cancel out. I will be having k square upon factorial two two times of this day two. Uh, this is day two u by day two. Day two u by day two two u i n and so on. This is my uh, u i n plus one, and uh, uh, and uh, my u i plus one, uh, u n plus one minus plus u i n minus one. So when I uh, uh, no, this subtraction will be cancelled out. So I'm subtracting, please. So this is plus two. K and then I have K cube, two K cube. Uh, uh, please, uh, this edge I write this edge, two U I N plus two K square upon factorial two, day to U by day to I N and so on. And I have A I N plus one minus A I N minus one here. This factor and this factor. This is equal to when I subtract, you will have two day u by day t i n plus two k cube upon factorial three uh, i n uh, k cube day two cube day two cube u day t t i n and so on and so on. Now when I take this side, and uh, uh, so this is two k here. So uh, you will understand that uh, I have two k here. So canceling out my my u i n plus one minus u i n minus one will be if I divide by two k here, it will be something like. Uh, I retain there itself, so that is better. So I have two k here, which is equal to uh, day u by day t k times i n plus this is two please plus two k cube upon factorial three day cube upon day two cube i n. So when I divide k, k, this two goes, this two goes, and this become k square, k square, and so on, and so on. And I have u i n plus one plus u i n minus one upon h square. Please see that. My point will be this is u i h square here. And I'm not bothering at the moment because to make my point, I will consider that later on, but I'm talking about this. So uh, when I take this, uh, this edge, as you can understand, uh, two uin upon h square plus uh, what do you call uh, plus, so uh, I have taken this two cancel out here. That's okay. Two u i n plus. Then you have two uh, day two u of day two two i n upon h square plus so on. Now, friends, what is happening is that uh, when I put all these things, uh, I will be getting k square uh, terms here. And uh, day u by day t, I will taking out. So ultimately, what happened is that this term k square and this uh, this term here, day u t because my equation is day u by day t here. So day u t I will take taking out. So what happens is that my point is that k square by h square, I am getting a term like this when I take my uh, thing. And this term uh, will give you truncation error will not be uh, depending on only k and h, 
but depend on k square upon h square 2 and since my truncator should go to 0 what it says is that when k tends to 0 and h tends to 0 your k by h also tending to 0 it says that and that meaning is then only day two why day two terms will not be coming in the picture in the truncation error and you will be getting only your day u by day t and day to u by day x2 term alpha will be taken care of because of the right hand side so what i mean to say is you will be having this equation but uh, you say k tends to zero h tends to zero and k is tending zero to zero slower than uh, what you call h so k by h is some term r so k tends to zero h tends to zero but k by h can tends to r where r is not zero and that case is no longer a parabolic equation but it will become a, a, a hyperbolic equation so what i mean to say is that that day two by day two, two term has to be made zero and in that case in do ford frankel scheme uh, not only is not consistent until uh, your h tends to zero k tends to zero your k by h also tend to zero then only it will be consistent so consistency is very important concept which let you know to answer the kind of question that how will you make sure that your difference scheme which we have considered indeed it is producing the result of the, that difference allocation and not for any other difference allocation and it can be done from the truncation error when you discuss truncation error you should left with only your differential equation and other error should go to zero. H, H tends to zero, K tends to zero. And your Dufort Frankel scheme desire not only H tends to zero, K tends to zero, but K by H also tending to uh, zero. And K by H tend to zero means K must be smaller than H. That's what it says. K must be smaller than H or much smaller than H then only your, you will be getting convergent result for the differential equation otherwise not so that is the condition though uh, one can see that this scheme is unconditionally stable this is unconditionally stable now i come to uh, connection between these three so there is a lax equivalence theorem What it says is that for a consistent for a consistent this is pretty lax one of the I must say giant of differential equation of more of partial and hyperbolic equation consistency for a consistent for a consistent finite difference scheme stability is stability is necessary and sufficient condition for convergence so friend uh, uh, it connect all three the first thing is that your scheme should be uh, uh, what you call a uh, consistent and nobody desired a uh, scheme uh, which is not uh, consistent so for a consistent different uh, finite difference scheme if you can discuss stability easily then stability will give you convergence or if you can discuss convergency convergence easily then convergence will give you stability that's what it is about that's what it is about so, uh, hints onwards, I will discuss only stability and uh, uh, I will assume wherever possible, I will give you truncation error also. And uh, I will say that my scheme, if, if stable, it is convergent too. Now, uh, the scheme which I, uh, uh, I derived, uh, the two level scheme which I was talking about. This two-level scheme, which I would talk about, 
uh, first thing is that if I put my uh, that my coefficient are positive, it gives you that lambda should be less than or equal to half. I say my all coefficients should be positive. Then uh, positivity will give you the stability and lambda should be less than half. That is the condition I get. But if I do my actual analysis, then uh, how to discuss st stability? How to discuss stability? There are two ways. One is the matrix method. Form the system of equation, linear equation. Find the eigenvalues, and my eigenvalues should be all less than one. At least one should be. At least one of them should be less than one. So maximum eigenvalues should be less than one. That's what it says. The second is the Fourier series method. Series method. Friends, uh, most of you teach in the first year, and uh, we know that uh, we teach Fourier series to find um, solution of heat conduction equation. That's what we do, really. We do uh, because uh, uh, so uh, my heat conduction equation admits heat conduction equation equation admits a Fourier series solution. A Fourier series solution. We teach it in the first year, right? So if uh, it uh, produces a Fourier series solution, then I want to know if I uh, have some error, how error will magnify if I change my t large, large and large, it goes to infinity, and if they remain bounded my method is stable. So there are two ways. Now the, let me uh, come to uh, Fourier series method because uh, if I go to uh, uh, matrix method, which is uh, rather much easy, you will understand that too because uh, I can write my system as uh, my equation will be from u1 n plus 1, u2 n plus 1 to u n uh, M, I'm writing please because M points are there uh, in my line. In my line, there are M points, interior points. This is equal to, if you see, uh, uh, because I can write this, so I will have 1 minus 2 lambda, 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 1 minus 2 lambda, lambda, and lambda, 1 minus 2 lambda. This is uh, 1 minus 2 lambda, lambda, and this is lambda, and this will be uh, U1N minus my boundary condition. So I write a star here, U2N, UM minus 1N, and then I have UMN and uh, some contribution from the left side, which is again boundary condition. So the, this is the system why I have. And my stability will depend on the matrix because uh, from one level, if I call this matrix a T, first T, then it becomes T square at the second level because uh, as you understand, this solution become known. So it goes, this solution become known, it goes to right hand side and a new solution will come. So my matrix become T, T square, T cube. And I say I go, my time goes to infinity, that is N goes to infinity. So my matrix T should be less than or equal to mod of or the norm of T should be less than or equal to one. And that means the eigenvalues of this should be less than one. And you will see that uh, the formula which I have given to you in my uh, last class, because this, this is having symmetric and everything, you can find the uh, eigenvalues which I write for the sake of you that my eigenvalue will be 1 minus 2 lambda plus lambda square. Uh, so I have uh, 2 under root of lambda square. So it will be lambda cosine i pi upon m plus 1. I'm writing i here. So these are the eigenvalue i. And uh, i goes from 1 to m. And friends, now cosine, this can be uh, converted into sine and uh, you will find that 
condition will be that lambda should be less than half. If you desire, I can explain more here, but I don't think you need it. To, I just say that I can write this as one minus two lambda, one minus one minus uh, what you call cosine theta. Theta, you understand why I pi m plus one. Then I can convert this into a sine square form, and from sine square theta to form, my condition come automatically. I want to put less than equal to one, so condition will be end up less than half. So this is my uh, just matrix method. Then I come to Fourier series method. So I say that to my equation, uh, my series, uh, admit uh, Fourier series because I am writing uh, U M N because uh, I I I am to use complex form of the Fourier series. So I, I say that I have my Fourier series in the form of A I beta M. Beta m, so beta I take a constant without thing. I say e i uh, uh, beta x. I'm not to confuse you. My i is uh, uh, under root minus one. So i here is the index, but here i is under root minus one. So this is the complex form of the series. My scheme is u m plus n plus one equal to uh, lambda. U M plus n minus U M minus n plus one minus two lambda. You have a U M n. Now I write write the, put the series there. So what I have is, uh, please understand. So what uh, I please don't get confused. So I write J here so that. Summation is over uh, J and other factors, no problem. So this is uh, as I write to beta m here. So this is on m zero to infinity, right? So you have x j here. Uh, now I write here. So what you have is uh, u m plus one, uh, n plus one. So I have the left side edge. Uh, I have a t n e i beta m x j because there is nothing change here. Here lambda I have series of e uh, sorry uh, a this is t n plus one please because n plus one here so t n plus one this is a t n E i uh, beta m x j plus one. I write x j plus one plus a t t n e i beta m x j minus one. This is my that part and one minus two lambda. Uh, you have. A T N E I beta M X J. Ah, right. This is the scheme. Now you have two infinite series, left side but the infinite series, right side end of the infinite series. So you you will equate term by term. But I mean to say it. Uh, please understand now. So by right side I can write properly like this lambda. You have a T N, which is coming in both side, so I write this way, and then you have J plus one, so I write E I beta M X J plus H, because J plus one is X J plus H, and similarly this become E beta M X J minus H. This is uh, this factor. Plus the next factor remain the same, so one minus two lambda uh, remain the same. So you have this. Uh, let me write here so that uh, uh, you don't have confusion. Now there are two infinite series which are equal, so their term will be equal. So I write simply this will be 
I write if you permit me a n plus one, which is a t n plus one, which is a n plus one, and uh, e i beta m x j will be cancelling out, which is common everywhere. So this is equal to uh, lambda times I write a n. Now a t m the same thing t n. So a n I have written e i beta m x j plus h. X J plus H, so X J I am cancelling out, so you get here e raised to power uh, J H only here, and similarly A N uh, you have A minus J H here because this is X J minus H. Please J minus one. This is a uh, uh, M minus one, M minus one. So J minus one uh, say uh, E minus J H. M is replaced by J here, so that I, have, I am not getting confused. And you have this term plus you have this term, which is one minus two lambda, because this is the same thing which you have A J beta M H, same term, same term, A J this same term. So you have uh, one minus two lambda here and nothing else. So this is what I get. This is what I get uh, a n also, of course, a n also. So you have this. Now I go to the next page, and then you have that a n plus one is equal to a n, and I have uh, e j h plus e minus j h uh, beta 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 m and beta m right you have this uh, e uh, beta m j h and this so this is two of cosine j beta so j uh, uh, is uh, i terms i i here also right right so you have uh, this is two cosine uh, i write theta which is I just put plus one. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, bleach. I'm sorry, bleach. This is my lambda thing. So I write this way plus one minus two lambda a n term. Please check what I'm saying. This is one minus two lambda a n. This a n can be taken out. This is lambda and a i beta j. Uh, uh, beta j h and e y minus j h uh, though this is not j beta m h and j uh, beta minus h so you have uh, theta which is nothing but uh, the beta m h theta h beta m h please check you have uh, i beta h and beta m h and minus i beta m h so you have uh, Two cosine theta here, and ultimately I can write a n plus one upon a n equal to what you call lambda time. Uh, you have uh, this is uh, one minus uh, something uh, two cosine theta h. What you call uh, one minus uh, 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 I. Consider the so you have a n plus one uh, lambda time two cosine theta, which is one minus uh, uh, two sine square. Uh, I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. But uh, yeah, so no problem, no problem. So you have uh, something like uh, I lambda two cosine theta one minus two lambda uh, this, or you have two lambda cosine theta minus 
one plus one or you have two lambda uh, what do you call uh, uh, you have one minus uh, sine square theta by two minus one this is a formula so two sine square by theta plus one and ultimately what you get is uh, uh, I think I am doing correctly uh, wait, wait, wait. Two, uh, okay okay so two lambda two lambda right right so you have something like one minus four uh, uh, yeah this is one here without lambda uh, am I right yeah yeah so you have four lambda sine you square theta by two so you have uh, this equation now for the stability my term should be becoming smaller and smaller a n plus one is next term so it should be a n plus one up a n less than one or I have uh, what do you call one minus four lambda sine you square theta by two should be less than one or this can be written as minus one should be less than one minus four lambda sine you square uh, theta y two and this is one now if i see this side this is always true because one cancel with one i left with zero here so negative quantity lambda is positive side is this quantity this is always true this side is always true if i take this side then i get four lambda is less than or equal to a four lambda sine square theta y two should be less than or equal to two, or I get this edge lambda should be uh, less than half sine square theta y two. Less than I write this way, and the value of sine square theta two y is maximum, so I say lambda is less than half. That edge, uh, this is the stability condition, is uh, put properly, and then I get same condition which I get by matrix for thing. And uh, what I mean to say is, the scheme which I derive is stable if one minus uh, lambda is less than or equal to half. That is what I have derived. By using Fourier series as well as well, uh, what you call uh, your uh, by uh, matrix method. Now I come to Krang-Lenkhuizer scheme. I give you broad outline, and if you ask any question, then I will explain that. So uh, Krang-Lenkhuizer scheme method. What is this? A uh, day u by day t is equal to uh, what do you call alpha time day to you by day x2. Now, uh, please understand me. My dtu equal to the, uh, uh, I write this way, my uin plus 1 is equal to uh, what do you call uh, ui or I write this way, uxi plus tn plus k and this is equal to uin plus k times uh, dt uin plus k squared upon factorial 2 uh, uin and so on but is the meaning the meaning is that this is nothing but 1 plus k dt plus uh, k squared upon factorial 2 dt 2 and so on u i n or I can write this as x of k dt operated upon u i n. So friend uh, what I mean to say is uh, that uh, u i n plus 1 is equal to uh, this is what I say that neatly that u i n plus 1 is nothing but exponential of the differential operator k dt u i n. Now, uh, if I want to define my scheme, I will use hints on what this formula because that is much easy to understand. So what Kankilikasar did, uh, did this way because 
it is implicit scheme it is implicit scheme so since it is implicit scheme some part from here should go to here crank nicholson uh, say did precisely the half part is going here so what they did i can write this as x of minus k by 2 dt is you uh, u i n plus 1 is equal to x of k by 2 dt u i n i hope everybody understand that so my aim is to find implicit scheme what Kang-Lexner did is that the half of the exponential took left side. So I have this. And uh, this says to me uh, that 1 minus k by 2 dt plus higher order terms are there. u i n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus k by 2 dt u i n plus higher order term, but I am not bothering about. Please this there are tanke error now i am given that my dt is precisely uh, alpha time dx2 from the equation from the equation i am given that my dt is alpha time dx2 so this become 1 minus i am using my equation now so my 1 minus q alpha delta x2 plus higher order terms i am not bothering about please at the moment because they are tanke error for me u i n plus 1 this is 1 plus k by 2 uh, alpha time d x 2 uh, plus higher order terms r u i n now i replace delta x 2 by uh, delta x whole square upon h square this is my finite difference approximation because the double derivative can replace by uh, delta center difference square upon h square so my scheme become now 1 minus k by 2 uh, alpha delta x2 upon h square u i n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus k by 2 alpha time d uh, sorry delta x2 h square into u i n yeah anybody any problem please here because i have done everything now i hope everybody understand this yes like we course any any problem please is there somebody nobody is listening to me i hope somebody is there yes sir listening sir okay thank you thank you thank you i thought i am just doing something and people are so uh, it's okay or some problem here hello yes sir okay sir okay, okay sir yeah that the answer i get from the students always i ask are you understanding me yes sir so that's what i am asking getting okay so no problem so ultimately uh, uh just see that uh, what i have done is uh, i replaced my finite difference operator and everything is there i just dress it up so when i dress it up this become one minus lambda y2 delta x2 u i n plus one is equal to one plus lambda y2 perhaps you know all of them that's why no much problem for you and uh, this is nothing but uh, u i n plus 1 minus lambda y2 u i plus 1 n plus 1 minus 2 u i n plus 1 plus u i minus 1 n plus 1 is equal to u i n plus l lambda y2 uh, what do you call u i plus 1 n minus 2 ui n plus ui minus 1 n friends uh, uh, why 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 like runga kota method became popular to solve ode because it was easy to apply but it is giving you very high accuracy of the fourth order it is uh, uh, explicit uh, 
single step method on the other hand when i come to crank nicholson it is also very popular because of its accuracy it is k square plus h square or to be precise if i take tanker's error this is of order k h square anybody has a doubt i will derive it okay so it is uh, uh, order of k q plus k h square while if i see my other scheme uh, which i gave you uh, this scheme uh, it is uh, of order uh, the two level scheme uh, which is of order k h square this is k order of k h square so this is more accurate tenkes and it is less here and hence it is preferred but only thing is that it is an implicit scheme and since it is a implicit scheme uh, uh, you have to solve a system of linear equation which has uh, the following form the matrix t if i write u n plus 1 is equal to a matrix uh, i write some matrix here uh, which is uh, u n plus the boundary condition which you get something here and something here which is uh, in the form of u 0 n plus 1 and u uh, m plus 1 n plus 1 here so you have this and by my t and a both are the trigonal matrix my t h in this case which you if you see the scheme my t here is uh, i take inside then this become 1 minus lambda minus lambda y2 because this is lambda y2 this is to say two cancel ho gaya so 1 minus lambda and then minus lambda y2 1 minus lambda y2 minus lambda y2 you have minus lambda y2 1 minus lambda and this is minus lambda y2 and similarly my a would be uh, something like uh, here uh, i have uh, so you have uh, this is plus bleach minus minus become plus that's why i was getting what is this so 1 minus lambda plus lambda y2 plus lambda y2 1 minus lambda lambda y2 and lambda y2 1 minus lambda and so on so you have uh, this triangular system so thomas algorithm will work here and you can get the solution and if you want to get uh, what you call uh, stability it is unconditionally stable if i use my matrix method my eigen values uh, mu i will be given by as you see this by t this is 1 plus lambda plus uh, multiplication of lambda by 2 with the lambda by 2 into 2 under root so lambda by 2 uh, so it become lambda by 2 into cos uh, as you understand i am writing i pi m plus 1 total points yeah so this goes here i get uh, this so my eigen values are uh, uh, but plus lambda yeah so my again values are 1 plus lambda plus uh, what do you call lambda cosine i pi upon m plus 1 right right and uh, for stability uh, my t uh, this eigen values must be uh, maximum eigen value Uh, must be uh, less than one, and uh, uh, when I do so, uh, what I get is one plus so my mu i h one plus lambda plus lambda. Uh, you have two cosine square. Uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, I am writing. What I am writing? One plus lambda plus lambda cosine i. so i have bleach so you have a uh, 1 plus lambda 
1 plus cosine of I write theta, so you understand me. Theta is uh, I pi upon m plus 1. So 1 plus lambda, 1 plus cosine theta, that is what? Uh, uh, 2 time. 2 time. Yeah. No, lambda times. 2 cancel out. Yeah. So you have 1 plus cosine square theta, which is equal to uh, 1 plus 2 lambda, uh, 2 cos square theta uh, by 2. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, please. I'm sorry, please. I'm very sorry. My, uh, 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 this is OK. My, what I have done is OK. But uh, uh, my matrix is not T, but T inverse A. T inverse A because T is here, A is here. So by UN plus 1 will be uh, uh, this T comes here, T inverse A. So I'm find the eigenvalues of what you call your uh, mu 1 for uh, T. So my T inverse will have eigenvalues as something like 1 upon 2 lambda cos square theta by 2. And similarly, I find for A. Then my eigenvalues for A will be, I wrote right in the form of sigma i. Then this will be, if I see my A, so this will be uh, a, what you call 1 minus lambda plus 2 lambda by 2 comes there also. Uh, this is a plus sign, right? So lambda by 2, lambda by 2 comes there also. So into uh, cosine theta, because our theta is having same name. So this comes here, and you get here as uh, 1 minus plus lambda cosine theta minus 1. Uh, I hope you are getting me. And this will give you 1 minus uh, what I've done here. So what I've done here, to 2 cosine square theta minus 1. And I have uh, what you call uh, cosine theta here. So I have minus uh, 2 lambda sine square uh, theta by 2. So my t inverse a have the eigenvalue that sigma upon uh, mu i, I'd say, mu i, which is nothing but uh, uh, mu i is already found. So you have 1 minus 2 lambda sine square theta by 2. Uh, 1 plus uh, 2 lambda. Uh, if I have committed some error, please check it. But uh, what I say is that uh, this should be also sine square theta by 2. Please check it. Okay. Um, I just leave it as it is because I don't want to waste time. But anyway, uh, uh, this is uh, coming sine square theta by 2 as I understand. Please check it. So this should be always less than 1. So my is scheme is unconditionally stable. My scheme is unconditionally stable. I can do the same thing by the Fourier series. Ultimately, same kind of terms will arrive, and you will get that this is always true. This is always true. So this is about what you call uh, what you call uh, uh, crank nickel scheme. Now let me take a Dufault Frankel scheme, or, or no, I, I take Richardson scheme. So and I show you that why it is. Uh, uh, so, so u i n. So this is Richardson scheme upon k uh, two k. I'm sorry, please. Two k is equal to alpha time u i plus one n minus two u i n plus u uh, i minus one n upon h square. And then I write the scheme. My scheme become u i n plus 1 is equal to uh, what do you call uh, I write uh, something called mu which is equal to 2 k alpha upon h square u i plus 1 n plus u i minus 1 n and I take uh, this part this side then I get 1 minus uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, minus 2 mu 
because this is coming this side to mu uh, u i n plus u i n minus one. Friends, uh, uh, if you pay attention to me, then I will say something. Otherwise, uh, I just do very quickly. Uh, I say that the most important part is that how to find uh, stability of three-level scheme. As we do in the uh, differential equation, every higher order differential equation can be uh, arranged in a system of first order equation. So that's what we do because the runga kota method or any other numerical method is designed for first order mostly and so uh, uh, what you call uh, i convert my higher order differential equation into first order differential equation by putting um, first order thing same way here to its is stability discussion i take uh, uh, v i n equal to u i n plus one n minus one because this is a two level so uh, this is three level scheme so i will write this scheme as two two level scheme two two level scheme so first scheme will be u i n plus one is equal to mu u i plus one n plus u i minus one n plus one my uh, no 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 plus uh, let me check not my uh, plus because of u i n minus one and minus two mu so minus two mu u i uh, n plus uh, i wrote there so this says v i n because i wrote v i n equal to that and my v i n plus one is equal to what you call your u i n so uh, so i replace that's the way you do uh, higher order differential equation there also by putting day by day x is equal to some parameter then day b by day x another parameter and so on so this is nothing but basically u i n plus one and v i n plus one is equal to you have uh, what do you call uh, you have something like uh, uh, mu delta x2 uh, what do you call yeah like this mu delta x2 plus uh, one uh, plus one and then i have one and zero because there is no 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 yeah, yeah true, true, true. so this is equal to uh, u i n and this is v i n so what i have done is that uh, uh, the given differential equation uh, uh, difference scheme has been converted into what you call uh, uh, your system of two first order or uh, two level schemes two two uh, two level scheme and my matrix comes like this now i put my fourier series and the eigenvalues of this thing should be uh, the matrix uh, so you will get a quadratic and the quadratic when i put fourier series you get in terms of mu uh, that should be having mod mu less than or equal to one and you will find for this scheme you get mod mu is always greater than one and hence and hence uh, this scheme is uh, what you call uh, your scheme is uh, is always uh, unstable always unstable because of uh, condition that one of the eigenvalues is greater than one one of the eigenvalues magnitude is greater than one and that's why it is unstable and is not of any use and that's why uh, Richardson uh, failed otherwise his scheme was of order k square plus h square as I already discussed uh, you have uh, another scheme that is Dufault Frankel scheme a Frankel scheme which is also three level 
but its order is k square plus h square plus k square upon h square please don't forget about this k square upon h square and this is the problem creator though it is unconditionally stable this is unconditionally stable so uh, uh, this is about uh, what we call uh, um, uh, two level uh, sorry uh, uh, one dimension problem uh, let me also discuss about uh, something about you have day u by day t is equal to alpha time day t u by day x2 plus day t u by day y2 so i have two dimension problem where my uh, domain h please understand my domain is only rectangle i cannot take uh, rectangle besides rectangle and square any other thing otherwise curve boundary will create problem for me so my domain is a rectangle and then i take my step length along x direction and i take same step length without loss of generality along y direction so i created my mess i created my mess and then uh, uh, i will be going to this is my x y space x y space and my uh, time space will be perpendicular to this so my things will be going to perpendicular to this and you will be having a, another uh, strip of like this uh, square and so this is my delta t or k now the, i want to derive uh, scheme for uh, this then uh, h i derived here please understand my basic thing because i gave you basic funda that my ui n plus one is always uh, e k dt i use this so that my life become easy uh, to derive the scheme otherwise there are no different of which so my uh, x k dt is nothing but u i j n plus one because i'm using time direction only so u i j remain uh, u i j n plus one equal to x k dt now uh, if i wish to derive uh, uh, and uh, what do you call explicit scheme then i can write this as u i j n plus one i change the color so that So I change the color. So this you you get edge, uh, what do you call uh, kdt and x kdt h k time alpha dx two plus dy two. So this is my this uh, because from the differential equation dy dt is nothing but alpha time dt by dx two. And d two by d y two, so this is what my uh, u i j n plus one h. Now, if I take uh, another thing, then what you have h uh, my u i j n plus one is equal to if I retain as it is, then I have uh, one plus k delta t, and delta t is replaced by alpha. So alpha comes here. Then this I can write as h square, and this I can write as what you call delta y two h h square. If you have different size, then h one square, h two square, and I get this u i j n. This is my uh, uh, approximation, and then this I can write as uh, one plus Lambda delta x two u i j n plus delta y two. Uh, no, sorry, I, I take u i j n out because one is already there. So delta y two u i j 
n. So this is what my uh, or what you call one form of explicit scheme is there and this scheme uh, will be of order uh, k plus h square k plus h square apply so you will apply but there will be a single point at the advanced level and you get this now friend please if you are interested in the subject uh, pay a little attention to me what i am saying because i am saying something differently now so if I write this H follows, I write this H follows Uij n plus one because my operator watch one plus k alpha dx2 plus uh, dy2 Uij and those who are interested may pay attention to me please. This is equal to I can write this H. 1 plus k alpha dx2 1 plus k uh, alpha dy2 without any problem because they are operator i will get the same effect uh, if i write this way uh, assuming uh, that uh, higher order terms are negligible so you will be getting k square alpha square that is coming from the truncation error and i know where i have reduced i am removing my k square term already so i will get this now please understand what i am saying because uh, higher order dx2 dy2 term will be coming in the free uh, in the expansion but k square term is coming and I'm taking my accuracy of order k, which I have already written. So this is desirable. Um, that is my truncation error will look into it. Right. So this is what I have written. But uh, so some part from the truncation error added here so that I get this. Now, please understand. First, I desire that delta x2, delta y2, which is coming here, should be same as delta y2 delta x2 friends who are interested this is not always true uh, if i take finite difference operator 2 that is ultimately i am going to get delta x2 delta y2 and it should be equal to the delta y2 delta x2 but this will be true if i take my domain as a rectangle that's why i say my domain is rectangle if i take my domain as a rectangle then this will always be true this will all be true and so for me um, dx dy2 is equal to dy2 dx2 may be coming but it is not possible if uh, delta x2 delta y2 is equal to delta y2 dx2 if my domain is not rectangle my uh, if there is a curve boundary then this sometimes it fails sometimes it fails but friends the moment i write this way I have taken some part from the accuracy in the difference location, uh, in the difference scheme, so it becomes more accurate. It becomes more accurate. That is one point. My second point, which you should understand now, is that if I write my uij n plus 1 star is equal to 1 plus uh, 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 k, first let me because this is you will understand from there so u i j n plus one equal to one plus lambda delta x2 and one plus lambda delta y2 u i j n now this is i replace delta x2 by delta x2 upon h square and dy2 by delta y2 upon h square then alpha k upon h square as lambda so i get this thing now if i get this thing then uh, uh, just put this thing computationally i get something better now so i write u j n plus one star h one plus lambda delta y2 u i j n and then i can find my u i j n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus lambda delta x2 u i j n plus 1 star please see that what i'm saying so i just when i put 
this quantity as uij n plus 1 star then the scheme can very well be written as uij n plus 1 star equal to 1 plus lambda y2 uij n and uij n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus lambda del delta x2 uij n plus 1 star computationally now see that there i get so many points because i expand all thing delta y, delta x2 delta y2 many terms but here what i have to do i go first along y direction find all uij n plus 1 star which is same way as i do my explicit two level explicit scheme in the one direction but it has to be done m times where m are the points along x direction so i find all uij n plus 1 star going along y direction only going so first when i i get all j, j then second i i got all j so i equal to one i equal to two i equal to three i equal to four i keep on doing so along y direction once i have done this all uij n plus one star are obtained i put those values here and do for j equal to 1 j equal to because my delta x2 is to be expanded so j equal to 1 j equal to 2 j equal to 3 so one loop for i where delta y2 will be going but my i remain fixed so for one loop for i then second loop uh, for j and you will get uh, all uij and computationally so this scheme is far far better than this scheme uh, which i have written here here uh, uh, this you have to anyway uh, obtain on all the points where i cannot if, if split in the factor form but this scheme which i have written here which is uh, though it is a uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, explicit scheme still it is far better than this scheme computationally and that is the basic idea my purpose is not to tell you that uh, you can use because this will be conditionally stable when your lambda is less than or equal to 1 by 4 is a two dimension so half into half 1 by 4 lambda is should be less than uh, 1 by 4 however this gives me idea what we call adi method what we call adi method and i am using the idea of adi to put this scheme in the what you call uh, your uh, uh, adi format first by direction only one direction i am going then alternate direction implicit method alternate direction implicit method and uh, I'm going first y direction, then I'm going then x direction, and I get my solution. So if I want to have implicit scheme, this is ADE scheme. This is ADE scheme, and this is I want to have a implicit because it will be unconditionally stable. So what to do? Same way, just I have done uh, what you call crank Nicholson. My uh, mm, u i j n plus one will be nothing but x of k dt of u i j n and then uh, i take half part here because my intention is to derive implicit scheme so one minus k dt u i j n plus one is equal to uh, one plus k uh, sorry k by 2 uh, dt u i j n and this can be written as uh, i'm not taking much time now so i can write this as lambda y2 uh, delta x2 1 minus lambda y2 uh, delta y2 u i j n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus lambda y2 uh, what do you call uh, delta x2 1 plus lambda 2y delta y2 uij n so this is my scheme which i derived uh, with the help of 
my Krang Lekasan type of approximation in 2D. Krang Lekasan type of. So this is equivalent to Krang Lekasan in 2D. Now, as I said to you, friends, try to understand me. If I, first thing is that this scheme is unconditionally stable because it is a can lesser type unconditionally stable so you have freedom to choose your time step as well as the space step uh, step second edge uh, is accuracy edge higher than the explicit scheme order of k square h square now i just see that if i use this scheme as a edge I will be getting block triangular system, which I discussed in the last class. Because delta x2 operator, delta y2 operator will give you a block tidal system where matrix may not be coming identity of diagonal, they may be coming triangular also. But if I do something like I have done here, computationally, I have done here, if I do something like that then my scheme will, can be implemented, implemented uh, very easily i just change the color please okay so you have uh, uh, this scheme so i do some trick with it so that uh, uh, life becomes easy for me computationally. And again, say this is possible only if my domain is rectangle. My domain is a rectangle. So the, uh, in order to write this scheme, uh, I just do my operator thing. And you understand what I'm doing. So I just write as 1 minus lambda delta x2 uij n plus 1 star is equal to uh, what do you call uh, i take n of the direction here so 1 by lambda y2 delta y2 u i j n and uh, my second thing is left here so i write this as u i j n plus 1 so this n plus 1 star is coming here which is nothing but 1 plus lambda y2 delta x2 uh, u i j n plus 1 star. So friends, uh, uh, the beauty with this is that uh, this scheme when I want to work, uh, my, these are two triangular matrix. So first, if I solve this system, then I have to go for y direction, keeping x fixed. So I will be having a matrix which is T, and I have something right inside which is known to me because right inside is always known to me. So I have some system where right inside is F, and I will be getting U at all the points, which I call a star here. U star here. But my matrix T is there. So first I will solve for I equal to one then for i equal to 2, then i equal to 3. So each uh, 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 tidal system has to be solved system has to be solved m times. The first for i equal to 1, then second time m uh, i equal to 2 and so on. And ultimately, all U star can be obtained. The moment I got all U star, I will use those U star here. So again, I have my tidal matrix. If I take a square domain, then T will be equal to T. Otherwise, T will be not equal to T because their size will be different. Otherwise, they will be the same structure. So I write T1 without any problem. And I will get my U which is in terms of f star in the right hand side and uh, so this is, is to be solved m times and this is to be solved again 
n times where n are the point along j so j equal to 1 2 up to n so i keep on doing so please don't get confused with this j and this and this is time direction so if you have problem then i can write p times where this is going from j 1 to p and so what you have is that uh, this system which is a tri douglas system i can easily solve with the thomas algorithm that's what i did uh, in the method of hockley i from the 2d i got back to one dimension and i told solve tri douglas system so many times please understand my idea same way here uh, t is tri f i have to solve m times and this is to be solved in p times and then i get the complete solution if I use this, it will be larger matrix where many zeros are coming in the picture and it cannot be solved. Uh, can can solve, but it not be so much uh, better. Uh, I, I just say that this is called Peaceman Rackford Scheme, ADI Scheme to be precise, ADI Scheme. So what is ADI Scheme? ADI Scheme means I give uh, uh, one direction fix and use only uh, another direction then i keep uh, another direction fix and keep on uh, use first direction uh, this is for 2d should you want to know about 3d then i will be having a split form in three direction and uh, i will be writing it the same way as i have written here one for y another for y uh, uh, one for x another for y and third for uh, what you call uh, Z, and you can solve uh, three uh, times, uh, three di triangle system uh, so many times. So that's what the basic idea of the ADI scheme is. Uh, I, I, I understand that uh, if you have interest, please uh, try to uh, get your uh, questions clarified. If you have any, please. Um, this is from my side. And if you ask, then I will do more. Yeah. So this is from my side. Uh, Dr. Lakhvir Korpili, from my side, uh, if you have any questions, I will very uh, glad to answer if I can. Yeah. सर आर की वैल्यू ना तो वो तो हम अपने हिसाब से चेंज कर सकते हैं कहां पर किसी ने ए से बी ले लिया किसी ने लिया 0 टू आर इन जनरल हां ए से बी ले लें या फिर 0 से आर ले लें बात एक ही है हां वो तो एक स्टार्टिंग है इसको ये लगा कि इसके कन्वीनिएंट था कि 0 टू आर के लिए हम्म तो दूसरे मारे हम तो दूसरे तो दूसरे मारे तो उनको लगा कि आर की वैल्यू 1 कर दो हाँ उसका कोई इशू नहीं था उसमें वो रिजल्ट चेक कर रहा था वो बिल्कुल मैच कर रहा है उसको जैसे प्लीज व्हाट टाइम तो है हेलो हेलो आर यू हेयरिंग मी और नॉट Yes, sir. Uh, we are able to hear you. Uh, okay. So what I am saying is that from the context, I don't know exact question. From the context, what I derive is that you are talking about my interval A to B. Am I right? Hello, or something else? Yes, sir. Huh, so A to B can be translated to uh, 0 to R or 0 to B, or R ko bhi mere ko banana hai, to ye to simple tha cheez hai, ke mene apne X ko X plus A upon B lag diya, bas. Translation and magnification, nothing else. Uh, so. Uh, that is not a big deal. Right, sir. Hmm. So, any other queries from the participant side? Uh, I just tell you that uh, one dimension uh, I try to uh, give because of the concept of convergence, stability, consistency, and how they are related. Um, whatever little experience I have, I come to 
know many times the people have do not have a, a, a clear idea and my second 2d is that again i say 2d is very important thing and uh, uh, how adi scheme work you may know adi scheme but when you write the program uh, i understand uh, people have problem because they do not know how the scheme is implemented merely writing the scheme is not sufficient i write the scheme this way it's not sufficient unless you know what is the logic behind it why you should have this kind of split form so that one direction is taken and once you know it's a very simple program two loops are there then two loops do their work as you do in the one dimension and you can write good program and you can get solution so that was the purpose i just tell you my idea so that was the purpose okay sir thank you very much sir So I hope all the participants uh, have conceived this uh, expert lecture in a very detailed manner. And thank you very much, sir, for elaborating each and every concept in very detail. And uh, our participants have uh, got the deep insights about the one-dimensional and two-dimensional heat equation. And uh, we are really grateful to you, sir for this expert lecture and tomorrow we will uh, again have expert lecture with the professor rc mittal sir and uh, i request all the participants to please connect with the same link tomorrow at 3 pm we are really thankful to you sir for sharing thank your you. precious time with us thank you very much uh, i must tell you tomorrow i am talking about bashless method uh, and uh, talking about uh, rbf and uh, i need not to say that why rbf are popular today because of the machine learning but they have good application in many field and in uh, different locations also so yes. uh, start in fact they started from different location then they have different applications other areas also today they are more popular because of the machine learning whatever little i know i will just give you tomorrow at that time thank you very much sir thank, thank you very much for thank sharing you. your profound knowledge and uh, expert experience with us it will be really well helpful for us in our professional journey thank you madam thank you a lot so i am thankful to all the participants for their uh, participation in all the interactive sessions i am thankful to all the faculty members of department of mathematics jp institute of information technology noida and uh, i my sincere thanks to professor alka tripathi ma'am for their continuous support for the smooth conduction of this event so thanks to all so we will connect with the same link tomorrow at 3 pm thank you thank you madam thank, thank you sir